The trio learns the name of the phantom town they are headed to, Full Sense. As the train is nearing the station, only inky blackness can be seen through the window. Feeling uneasy, Leighton and the others steady themselves as they prepare to venture into Full Sense. Good morning everybody, it's Minute and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. In the last episode, we made it into the Deluxe Suite, but in doing so, it somehow caused us to pass out and end up in Phantomville. This place gives me goosebumps. Yes, I'd second that. I'm sticking close to you too. pictures of the town. Indeed, and old ones from the look of it. Judging by their condition, I'd say they're at least 30 years old. Wow, how do you know? Oh, that's right, you're an archaeologist. Of course you know. Now, Luke, don't tell me you actually forgot. Well, we'd best press on. What is going on here? I don't know, but it's strange. Got another mystery right out of the gate. Full Sense Station. Minutes after Professor Layton, Luke, and Flora's arrival in Full Sense, the rundown train station transforms into a gleaming, ornately de decorated building right before their eyes. What caused the sudden change to the station's appearance? Following rumors of the Elysian box, the Professor, Luke, and Flora set foot in a strange town. But cautious as they were, nothing could have prepared them for the events to follow. Okay, perhaps I should have saved in the last episode. Chapter 4, The Phantom Town of Full Sins. Uh, good morning, everybody. No. So this is the phantom town we've heard about, huh? It's like something from a horror novel. I find this place unsettling too, but we mustn't let that keep us from our investigation. Who knows what kind of valuable information we might find here about the Elysium box. The Professor, Luke, and Floor decide to walk around the town. Riveting! Now that little pop-up right there of the chapter thing happened so quickly, there was part of me that was considering changing it up uh, for Curious v Village as well as for Diabolical Box and having it the episodes be numbered by chapters, so it'd be like chapter one, part three, or whatever. But, A, I never remember when the chapters start and end, so like, it's just not very memorable. This game in general doesn't really uh, strike me as like one that you don't remember it by its chapters, like, you remember this part of the game or that part of the game, but you're never like, oh, remember chapter six, that's my favorite chapter in the game, I love it so much. Now you're just like, oh, remember that part, it's amazing, it's so, like, you can't attach it to a specific chapter, because, like, I don't really remember, and I don't think anyone else really does either. And then, a second thing is that some of them are really stinking short, so I, if I was numbering them by chapters, I'd be like, chapter three, part one, and then it'd be chapter four, part one, because there's only one of them. So, that's why I don't really do that, I just have them by episode numbers. Oh, funny roll running into you here. Hello, howdy, hi, and all that. Hey, you're... The mailman. Yep, I've got mail to deliver here, but it's so dark that it always takes forever. No wonder the people always seem so on edge here. Well, that's all the more reason I need to bring a little sunshine to everyone's life with the mail. Wow, you deliver letters all the way out here? I sure do, and I got a schedule to keep while doing it. 
So on that note, I'll be off. See you around. It would seem our friend the ver our friend the postman works a very, very wide area for mail delivery. Really? But how does he do two routes every single day? Unless he has some kind of jetpack, that's just impossible. You may think so, Luke, but our world is full of inexplicable phenomena. This is but one of many. I guess so, but it still seems pretty much impossible to me. Guess that's it for now. Anything else we got in here doesn't look like it. I guess we'll... I don't think we can head backwards, it just leads us to the train. Professor, the train's still stopped at the station, but there's not a soul in sight. Then it seems we have no choice but to remain in town. Or we could just stay in the car, but no, that'd be lame, I guess. I'm Professor Late and not Professor Lame, man. Oof, <laughs> that's Flora's reaction to that pun. Are you alright there, Flora? You don't look well. I'm not sure. I just started feeling sick all of a sudden. You're as pale as a sheet. We'll find a place for you to rest straight, straight away. Hmm, I don't see any hotels around. If there's... If there, if there were, you'd think there'd be a sign or something. Despite the lack of advertising, I'd say one of those buildings over there is a hotel. Why don't they just bring her back to the train have her sleep in their room? Like, why is that not an option? Ah, whatever. Let's just go ahead and look for more hint coins. And a puzzle, apparently. Okay, no introduction. Puzzle number 61, where's the hotel? Multiple choice. In front of the town train station are four buildings standing in a row. One of these four is supposedly the local hotel, though it lacks a sign. Even so, you are st if you study the area carefully, you should be able to tell which of the buildings is a hotel. Can you figure out which of these four buildings is the hotel? Hint number one. Just study the four buildings carefully and the answer will present itself. A.K.A. try. Hint number two. Say, upon second glance, one of these buildings has the word hotel written on it. Don't you see it? I kind of want to try and find it before I read the rest of the hints, but, uh, hold on. Hint number three. A close inspection of the scene reveals that one building has letters of the alphabet written in its doorways and in window panes. So the solution... Can I find it before they tell me? I really can't. The solution is... Oh god, I would not have seen that. The solution is C. Let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. Maybe on a 3DS XL I could have seen that, but there it is. Hotel. And we got a dream fluff. Oh, this song. I don't know why, but like, I feel like this song gets brought back in the future. Or, like, there's a song similar to it, and it's, like, it's so, like, somber and sad and slow, I just really don't like it. How are you doing, Flora? Any better? A little bit. I think with a little rest, I'll be back to my old self. Flora, Luke and I are going back out into town to learn more about the town. Okay, I just said town twice. I was like, what? Why don't you stay here for a while and rest up? Yes, take it easy for a while, Flora. We'll be back before long. Thanks, Luke. Be careful out there. You too, Professor. Do you think Flora's going to be alright? I wouldn't fret too much, Luke. She may just be exhausted from our long journey. I think our best course of action now is to gather what information we can, we can and hurry back to the hotel. After all, a gentleman never keeps a lady waiting. Flora has left the group for the now. The top screen shows who's walking with you. Oh no, but she was so intricate to the plot. The professor and Luke decide to explore the strange new town. Uh, if we examine around here, we got anything for us? Doesn't look like it, though I'm sure I'm just missing it like that. And like, nothing over here, really? Okay, do you got anything for us, Esteban, Julio, Ricardo, Rodolfo, Montoya, De La Rosa, La Melis? Or Kranz, that could be your name too. Good evening, sirs. I do hope the young lady traveling with you feels better soon. He doesn't even have a puzzle. How lame. And there you go. There's a coin. And another coin. Very nice. Up there is where Flora is, right? 
Okay, just making sure. And there's a puzzle up here, so it was all well worth it to come back. Ah, oh, roses are like living gems. And they smell so nice. While we're on the subject of flowers, Luke, why don't you give this puzzle a shot? Puzzle number 62. Smell the roses again. Basically the same one we just did, but now it's given to us by Leighton, so I really don't want to read the instructions. Let's just get to it. Hint number one. Start by placing a rose in the lower left corner of the room, then just take it from there. Hint number two. If you know where one rose goes, placing the rest shouldn't prove to be too much of a challenge. Place your other roses so that the their scent doesn't overlap with the rose in the bottom left corner of the screen. Hint number three. In total, you need to place seven roses to finish this puzzle. The solution has roses in these two corners. One right here, one right over here, one right there, and there. And to top it all off, put one right here. Just leave it to me. Leighton's apprentice strikes again. Mm-hmm. With those roses in place, the whole room will be smelling great before you know it. There we are. That takes care of that puzzle. Nothing creates a feeling of tranquility in a room quite like the fresh bouquet. I'll say, those flowers in the Molentary Express's deluxe rooms may, sure made me feel relaxed. Ah, yes. The ones that the conductor placed in the rooms were nice. Hmm. Of course, it's so obvious. I can't imagine why I didn't think of it until now. What do you mean, Professor? Luke, think back to when that train car switched tracks. Can you remember anything? Well, honestly, I don't remember much. Everything's kind of foggy since I just dozed off during all of that. Of course you did. The sudden sleepiness we experienced was no coincidence. Furthermore, I don't believe it was mere chance that we awoke upon our arrival in full sense. No, I'd say our little nap was part of a larger plan. What plan would that be? Were I to venture a guess, I'd say those roses Sammy planted out around the train knocked us out. Then while everyone was asleep, they switched tracks. Precisely, my boy. And at that point, one car split off. I'd wager that only those riding the deluxe rail car were taken away to full sense. Guess that explains that, but I'm pretty sure we uh, put that together on our own when all that went down. In case you didn't, though, there's the answer as to how we fell asleep in the first place. Uh, we got two more hint coins. Very nice. Uh, what does that say? It's a huge mirror and not a single streak on it. I thought it was going to be like, hey, looking good today, Lukey boy. Uh, Floro, how you doing? I'll be here resting. You two be careful out there. We will, Flora. Do feel better soon. Uh, let's head on out here. And go over here. Everything I've seen leads me to believe that Dr. Schrader visited Full Sense. The Elysium box and the facts we need to solve the mystery of his death are close by. I'm sure of it. Do you think whoever stole the Elysium box might be hiding here as well? It's still too early to tell. But I'll know more if we can figure out why Dr. Schrader ventured out here in the first place. For now, our best course of action is to search for anything connected to the Elysium box. Let's get to it then. Lead the way, Professor. You heard the good Professor. Let's go ahead and start examining everything. Get some more coins. And more coins just popping up all over the place. Uh, doesn't look good anymore. Let's go. I think if we go downwards, there should be something new. Yes, there is. Rory, welcome to Full Sense, where you can dream a big and make those dreams a reality. Want to be filthy rich? In Full Sense, even something like that is a snap. Let me guess, you guys came here to get your hands on some of that hers and money, am I right? What hers and money? You came all the way here and you don't know about the hers and fortune? If that's rich, pal. Here's the story. A long time ago, the big cheese here in full sense, Duke Henson, found the mother of all gold deposits. Duke Herzen, there was so much gold you couldn't spend it in a lifetime. Then, not too long ago, the old man up and croaked, and now his money sits forgotten in his castle. How's that for an interesting story? Quite. 
However, we are not here for the treasure. Rather, we are seeking an item known as the Elysium Box. The Wuzza Wuzza Box? That's a new one to me. He doesn't seem to have anything for us. I believe there should be a puzzle on the screen somewhere. Uh, just because we missed one before. We seem to have been able to access all these puzzles in order up to this point. Uh, puzzle number 60, they want me to... Okay, so it is here, but not until a later point, I guess. Guess we'll come back later. Um, we'll go this way, I guess. Mark my word, Samuel, it's here in town. I can guarantee that. You are to scour every inch of this place and bring it back to me at once, got it? Oh, come on, Unko. Do you really think it's everything... You even think it's everything people say it is? I don't know, it kinda sounds like a lot of baloney to me. Are my ears playing tricks on me? I could have sworn you just told me that my information was wrong. You're in no position to be lecturing me on the subject. Now get out there and start looking. Okay, okay, no need to blow a gasket, I'm going. What do you think Mr. Beluga and the train conductor were talking about, Professor? It would appear that they, too, are out in the, on the hunt for something. Oh, look over there, Professor! What on earth could that be? It's a book! With a very weird series of appendages coming out of it. It's some variety of a strange book. Perhaps someone dropped it while running around town. Yikes, get a load of this crazy cover. What's the symbol on it? Let's have a look. The symbol seems to be a shape of a goat. Well, whatever it is, this gives me the willies, but I do wonder what's written inside. Hard to say with this book locked up as tight as it is, isn't it? Still, this symbol is very intriguing. Say, Professor, might somebody in that unique antique shop over there tell us something about it? Excellent idea, Luke. Let's begin our investigation there. The old diary option has been added to the trunk. I don't remember this, actually. Beluga's search. Beluga seems to be working Sammy in like a dog, sending him all over town in a frantic search for some unknown item. It's unclear why Beluga would set up a secret train connection to full sense, but it's clear to hit, clear that this item is very important to him. What could it be? Gee, I wonder. The professor and Luke decide to visit a local antique shop. Sure. Let's check out this diary section. Oh, there are four sections here. It's another mini game. I met the most enchanting girl at the ball we held last night. These parties are usually a complete bore, but at her but her presence changed all of that. As the Duke's son, the unfortunate reality is that most people are either unnaturally polite or fawning toward me. But this girl was warm and real, and she traveled and she treated me like anyone else. It was very refreshing indeed. I do hope to see her again. I think this is just stuff that will get unlocked as literally unlocked as the game progresses so because it's not really a mini game i think we'll be reading these as soon as they become available to us as for everything else though we are going to continue onward as we've been doing uh, apparently that's where the door was hey i was wondering where you were chummy old buddy old pal old chum old chumly no he's not chumly from Yu Gi Oh gx but whatever maybe there's like long distance cousins or something like that we got anything of interest around here I, I mean to go outside and like right in the back of my mind in the last second I was like I might actually but walk outside uh, what do you got first Chelmy looking at the antiques getting a souvenir inspector Chelmy what did you where did you come from hmm. took the words right out of my mouth laddie wasn't expecting to see you two in a place like this after some field work in dropstone I was able to deduce that this town and the Elysium box are linked Dr. Schrader had stockpiled quite the crack, the stack of research on this Elysium box. The criminal in, the criminal I'm in pursuit of more likely than not killed the doctor to get his hands on the box. So instead of chasing the man, I decided to chase the box. When I find it, I'll find the culprit. Wow, that's a solid bit of reasoning there. I didn't expect that from the inspector. Hey, did you say something, lad? Oh, um, no, sir, not a word. Good, because I've got no time for idle chit-chat. 
I've got a murderer to catch and call back to London. Come along, Barton, we're leaving. Mm, I mean, yes, sir. And there's a dude in the back. Hey, he looks somewhat normal. Kind of looks like Mr. Rogers, actually. Good day. Are you shopping out here for anything in particular? I apologize, but we're not here to shop today. However, I was wondering, have you ever heard of an antique called the Elysium Box? Oh dear, where did that... Here we go with that box again. You know, you're the third party to ask about it today. The third? Those two detectives you saw were just asking about it, and half an hour ago, there was an... There... And half an hour ago, there was a young lady. I can't read. She seemed interested in knowing whether anyone had been searching for the box around town. Hmm, can you describe the young lady? Uh. Oh, she was quite the beauty. She wasn't a local, but she had a face that seemed just familiar. Uh, and the officers, well, they said they were on an official police investigation. I'll tell you what I've told everyone today. I wish I could help, but this box you're after is news to me. One of my visitors I forgot who mentioned something about the box having quite a history behind it. If the thing was ever in full sense, it must be worth checking out at the Harzen Museum. Where might we find this museum? Just look for the big building in the middle of a town, ways to the north. The museum houses a wealth of documents celebrating the history of our town. This is all extremely useful. Thank you for the suggestion. We'll be sure to pay the museum a visit. Oh, uh, before you run off, would you mind I took a look at that book you got there? Feel free, my good man. Hmm, yes, the construction is quite unusual for a book of its age. Lovely work, and very rare, I'd say. Would you happen to know anything about the symbol on the book's cover? I was just about to comment on how familiar that symbol feels, though I, it has no significance of, that I'm aware of. I must confess what drew my eye to the book were its locks. Old gadgets always fascinate me. Its construction is very basic, so you might be able to turn the locks with any old key you stumble upon. As a, master of, as a matter of fact, why don't we see if this key does the trick? It's my way of saying thank you for showing me something interesting. Oh, many thanks, my good man. You got a diary key. Each key unlocks another old diary chapter. How convenient that, like, any key in the world will work, but they only work on one lock at a time. You can't use the same key twice. How does it know? I have no idea. Gee, it's too bad we didn't find out more about that book there. It certainly would have been nice, but we'll have to put the book aside for now. It's time to pay a visit to the Herzen Museum. The Professor will go to the museum. Beat you to it. Check out this diary once again. I had the great fortune of bumping into that girl from the ball again today. She's the daughter of some fancy lord or another, and it shows. Her intellect is matched only by the grace she displays. To be honest, I'm quite taken with her and have already started courting her. However, I fear father seems less than pleased with the idea. Let's examine the place around a bit more. There's like a shiny piece of poop up here, but whatever. This is not Breath of the Wild. This is Professor Layton, in case you needed clarification on that, because they are so, so similar to one another. Well, I guess they are when you think about it, because, like, uh, Zelda games are full of puzzles and whatnot. I don't know. Now I'm just thinking about Professor Linkton and the Overdue Electric Bill again. God darn it. I've heard all about you, Missy. I know you've been asking around town about that box. Oh, but I just... And before you say anything, I don't care who your dear old lad is, dad is. No one's above the law. In my eyes, anyone out chasing the Elysium box moves to the top of my suspects list. No, you've got it all wrong. I'm sorry if you wouldn't mind. What is it, Barton? Can't you see I'm in the middle of something here? Um, yes, about that, sir. The criminal receipt killed a man to obtain the Elysium box, so the villain should have it already. If the young lady was our culprit, she'd have no need to ask around about the box, in my opinion, sir. Oh, is that so, Barton? Hmm, I don't recall ever asking for your analysis of the situation. Terribly sorry, sir. Please forgive my momentary lapse in judgment. I'll just be going now. Oh, poor Barton. Barton, get back here this instant! I'll have your nightstick, I swear! Gah. Hey, that's the girl we saw on the station at Dropstone. What's her name? Katie? What was her name? Katie? 
no, that's not it. I believe you're thinking of Mr. Anderson's daughter, Katia. Yes, that's the one. Who'd have thought she'd be headed to the same place as us? Hmm. Well, unfortunately, we aren't able to talk to her just yet, but I guess that answers who was the third person that was asking about the box. Got a hint coin. And nothing else that I could find. It's like dusting when going around this place looking for all the hint coins. Uh, we can go up this way. And hey, this guy looks a bit familiar, wouldn't you say? <laughs> now there's a couple of mugs I've seen before. Hey, I know you. And I know the fate, because that's what brought you, me, and that swell tea set of yours together. Now that we're all reunited, I say we celebrate with a cup of tea. Brew us something nice, would you? You want us to make tea for you? That's right, whippersnapper, but nothing fancy. A cup of Braille Classic would do the trick. It's so easy to make, even a baby could do it. A baby with a magic tea set, that is. Anywho, all you need to do is some oasis leaf, a little brisk berry, and a sprinkle of bell tart seed. Do we have to? I guess? Huh. Also, I was not listening to what he, what he said. Didn't want that. Brisk berry, bell tart seed. I th yeah, the first three. Hopefully it doesn't matter which order we put them in. Okay, so we're doing this one a bit earlier. Well done, one pot of tea coming up. Oh, it's a little sour and a little sweet, yum. I certainly have to tip my hat to this tea's drinkability. I imagine it would be delicious cold as well. Yep, and since it's all night, all nice and light, I bet just about anyone would be happy to have a cup. Mm, yes, I myself am partial to its lovely fruity aftertaste. Uh, I guess we're done. Can we like get out of here now? Add ingredients to the teapot, but I don't want to. It's like the tea you want to serve to him. I guess we'll serve this one to him, the Bell Classic. Fantabulous! A smile spreads across Starshin Farshin's face. He seems restored and cheerful. Okay, <laughs> not a bad cup of tea, it makes shorty. Of course, you wouldn't have pulled it off without my expert direction, so don't get cocky. It was literally the first three ingredients we got, which came with the tea set, mind you. You know this town is filled with thirsty folks. You got the tea set, so the way I see it, it's your responsibility to help people. If you manage to help everyone out with a tea break, good things will happen. Yes, I promise. Gosh, Professor, what do you think? How much good could we really do with one cup of tea? Oh, a fair bit, Luke. A gentleman never underestimates the power of a cup of tea. <laughs> that's a great, that's I think it's one of my favorite Leighton lines. A gentleman never underestimates the power of a cup of tea. Oh my god. If Professor Layton ever makes it into Smash, I want him to be like Bayonetta, where he has like a whole singing sentence as a taunt, and I want that to be one of his things, where he just says, A gentleman never underestimates the power of a cup of tea. And like his side B is like spilling tea onto people or something like that, I don't know. Hmm, well, when you put it like that, I suppose it couldn't hurt to spread the wealth. And he's just magically gone. Okay, that was a fun little cameo. Oh god, we're at 29 minutes already. A derby. Girl, you two are running around a lot. Makes me tired just watching you. <laughs> Why don't you just rest a, spell, rest a spell with this puzzle I got? Puzzle number 89, flower bed fun. Skipping ahead a bit. Here are four circle, circular flower beds, each with a radius of 10 feet. The way they're arranged forms a space between them. Can you find the area in square feet of, this, of the section colored red below? Ignore the width of the border around the flower beds when calculating your answer. Hint number one, don't bother thinking about pie. You don't need it to solve this one. But I like pie. Mmm, pie. Hint number two, if you draw straight lines between the four center points of each of the flower beds, it makes a square. Hint number three, from the points where the two flower beds touch, draw two di diagonal lines that cut through the center of the diagram and end where two other flower beds touch. These two lines should divide that middle space between all four flower beds into the four neat sections. Where, what can you learn from those four sections? The solution is... My style is being upside down. The solution is four, 
400 square feet. Like, I always think to do this for simply because, oh, of course it recognizes it now, but like, it looks like that in the digital picture, but like, anytime I do that, it always doesn't read it, but it's 400. And now to test my theory. When I'm real awkward, I've accidentally submitted 4,400. Two gentlemen leaves no puzzle unsolved. Nice job. If the red section has an area of 400 square feet, that's a lot of words. Golly, you ran through that puzzle so fast. Maybe I had spin. It looks like some combination. It looks like a combination of like Tim Allen and Bob Sackett or something like that. You're one of those people who does everything all slick lacquer. I get tired just thinking about it. We got an ingredient for the tea set, which is nice. So I guess this is where we're going to start getting all the ingredients. This might be a great spot to find some ingredients. And on that note, I think we should end the episode off because there's no coming back from that. Next time on Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box, we'll continue to head towards the museum in search of da -da -da -da, the Elysian Box. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.